Welcome to Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today we're here to talk about Stanley Black & Decker. Yep, the largest tool company in the world. Now, earlier this year, they finished their acquisition of MTD Outdoor Power Equipment. Now, they bought 20% of that company. That's an Ohio-based company. They bought that back in 2018 with options to buy the rest of it. And sure enough, they did just that. Now, we talked about that earlier in the year, back in January. Now, if you don't know, uh, MTD, they make a lot of different stuff. They have Cub Cadet, Troy Built, Rover, Wolf Garden, uh, Robomo, and, and others. And they've been making stuff like Craftsman and whatnot for Stanley Black & Decker for some years now. Now, the reason this is picking up is because just today in Forbes, uh, Jim Laurie, he's the CEO of Stanley Black & Decker, announced that they have big plans to electrify gas power tools, trimmers, and more. Now, I've, I've said this. I've called it. I said gas is dead. It's a dead man walking. And, of course, a lot of you get your hackles up and try to claim that gas will never die. And all. I don't know why you're such a fanboy of it. I mean, we're just talking about industry trends. You can argue all you want, or we can talk about the facts. You can use your emotions, or we can talk about facts. And the facts are that the largest tool company in the world just bought one of the largest outdoor power equipment companies and is talking about converting it almost entirely to electric. And the reason why, well, it, you could it's COVID. <laughs> That's what it is. Honestly, what happened was all these people stayed home and they, uh, they decided, you know what, working on the yard stuff's pretty cool, but I don't like this gas stuff, so I'm going to go with electric. In fact, if you look now, percentage of OPE purchased this year versus gas and electric. Now, this is from 2020. As you can see, in 2018, gas way was way more than electric. They've gained, batteries gained eight. Now, this is not just electric. This is battery has gained 8% market share over gas in, in, uh, in just two years. And that trend has been moving forward since about a decade ago and is expected to go even further we're going to talk about it. in fact if we take a look at this you can see this is the growth chart showing uh gas versus electric uh versus others and such and the market share for uh battery powered and electric is just increasing every year whereas gas is fairly stagnant now what's really funny is robo mowers are going just bonkers that's a and those are almost entirely electric those are those little smart gps mowers you just set and forget it and the little bugger just goes out and mows the yard on its own it must be nice anyway let's look some more of this data here they're talking about in this chart we see people who just purchased a gas powered equipment what percentage of those people people who already chose gas had considered you know electric 27 percent had had sort of considered it 17 percent had strongly considered it 19 percent had very strongly considered going with electric ended up going with gas the number one reason they cited was the the perceived power rating not not what they've seen actually but what they perceived and 32 percent of people said that if that perception was that the price and performance was exactly the same that they would have gone with electric without even thinking about it 28 percent said they'd have to think about it, but they would probably go that way. 14% are not sure. And, of course, 11% would always stick with gas because fanboys, uh, which, which is weird because it's just a fuel platform. Anyway, looking at what Stanley Black & Decker already has, we look at their power tool lines. Of course, Black & Decker has been for a long time now entirely electric they're a, a large seller when it comes to diyers homeowners and stuff they've got lawnmowers chainsaws trimmers blowers hedgers pole saws the 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 core units if you would for outdoor power equipment now if we go look at craftsman craftsman is well split between gas and electric we see lots of gas equipment but also lots of electric equipment when you look at craftsman uh, you see uh, in both cases, they have electric lawnmowers, they have gas lawnmowers, they have electric trimmers, they have gas trimmers, all, you know, back and forth. Well, what about the old DeWalt? Well, DeWalt is almost entirely in electric. If you're a DeWalt user and you're looking for DeWalt outdoor power equipment, it's going to be electric. It's going to be cordless. The only thing they have in gas there is uh, pressure washers when it comes to outdoor power equipment. Uh, everything else is battery powered electric. Now, one of the big companies over at MTD is already electric, and that is Cub Cadet. Now, Cub Cadet has long been known for making excellent outdoor power equipment. 
uh, gas riding mowers, gas lawn mowers, snowblowers, all sorts of other stuff. Well, if we see here, this is their big move towards electric, 100% electric, 0% compromises. They have already started moving that way, which is part of the impetus for Stanley Black & Decker to make this move. They've, they said they really want to get behind this and that electric is the future. Now, why is it the future? Well, we can argue about who has the best performance, who has the best price. We can argue all that all day long. But there's another, there's another force here, and I don't care whether you like it or not. We're going to deal with facts. Facts are that the government does not want you using gas. <laughs> I kid you not. And I, I'm not trying to get into left versus right because this has been going on for years. All right. And, and I know a lot of you are going to be like, it's just California. It, it's not just California. But you know what it is? It's affluent neighborhoods that are pushing this that by far and away. Since the 70s, and, and the number one culprit here isn't mowers, believe it or not. It's, it's uh, of course, it's leaf blowers. People hate leaf blowers. They're loud. They're noisy. They're everywhere. They're constantly being used. Even when you're not mowing, there's always some sort of debris that needs to get blown around with a leaf blower. Well, 60 cities in California have already got ordinances banning or regulating the use of gas-powered leaf blowers. And they're looking to extend that into all forms of gas-powered outdoor power equipment. Here's an article on turfmagazine.com. This is for industry insiders in the outdoor power equipment landscaping kind of thing. And they talked to a bunch of people who were in the industry, what they felt about it. Of course, their reaction was generally like, <laughs> they're not happy about it. But here's the facts. A, a general leaf blower will put out the same kind of emissions uh, running for one hour as a 2017 Toyota Camry driving 300 miles. These small engines are not fuel efficient. They're not uh, emissions efficient. And this is just what we're going to see going forward. The, uh, the, or the noise pollution clearinghouse here has been one of the big uh, proponents uh, moving against these kind of tools, the gas-powered outdoor power equipment here. Now, if you think this is just a bunch of hippies pushing this kind of stuff, you got to understand, man, you got to follow the money. You got to follow the money. Who's supporting these? Do you think it's Bloomberg and all those folks? Nope, it's 3M. I mean, I, you can't see this down here, but at the bottom it says sponsored uh, in large part by 3M Acoustic Control. Go figure. There's always somebody with some money somewhere who's trying to push it to help support their business. <laughs> but why are they doing this? Well, as I said, a lot of more people are working from home due to COVID. They, uh, they started working from home the last year and a lot of companies des decided, you know what? This is a good way to go. It gets less people in the office. We get better productivity. We can often pay people less. They're happier. We're going to keep doing this going forward. Well, guess what? One of the most annoying things you can happen to you when you're on your Zoom call with your boss or a conference call is that your next door neighbor or the landscaping company fires up their outdoor power equipment there and you got a leaf blower outside your window. In fact, this happens to me weekly. I have to schedule my recording periods around the local landscapers. Now, here in Montana, it's not too bad. We really only have it on Tuesday afternoons. If you notice, that's why yesterday afternoon's video got published a little later than normal. I had to sit there and wait for them to finish landscaping. In, uh, in Vegas, it is ridiculous because I don't think anybody in Vegas mows their own yard or does their own leaf takeaway or any of that kind of stuff. They use, everyone uses landscapers. Now, not everyone in Vegas, of course, uses gas because, you know, I know several people out there who run full electric trucks and vehicles. They've got solar chargers on top of the trailer, the whole nine yards. But the fact of the matter is we got more people working from home and more people are concerned about outdoor power equipment and noise pollution. And, and you can scream at the wind all you want. It's going to keep blowing. And this is the direction that it's blowing. Uh, citizens for a quieter Sacramento. Yeah, 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 you can say what you want. But one of the things we got here is we can see that, you know, there's over 60 cities. At this point, when they published it, it was only 20 cities. But there's now over 60. And the state of California itself is looking at doing a statewide ban. But if we look at the cities that are involved, we got L.A., Santa Barbara, Belvedere, Berkeley, Beverly Hills, Carmel, Claremont, Del Mar, Indian Wells, Laguna Beach, Los Altos, Malibu, West Hollywood, the one thing these all have in common, these are all affluent neighborhoods. 
Efforts to ban blowers are underway in Palo Alto, Porto, Portola Valley, and Sunnyvale. Palo Alto and Sunnyvale are in Silicon Valley. All right. Why, why is this happening there? Well, because these people have money and they don't want to be bothered by those noisy uh, uh, leaf blowers, the ones from the landscapers they're hiring. I know. I know you can argue all you want. I'm just telling you the way things are going. Now, as I said, this isn't just California, folks. Now, Cal remember, California, one in five people live in California, or at least it used to be one in five. It's probably like one in six, one in seven these days as people leave. But guess what? Those people are leaving, and they're probably going to vote for that wherever they end up. Uh, again, we're not getting left or right. This is just the way things are moving. Here's our states that regulate leaf blower usage. California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Oregon, Texas, and Washington. Yeah, I said Texas in there. That's right. This, this is happening across the United States. I got a link here. I'm also going to put down. This is a HD Supply. They've got a website here, part, part of their website here, where you can go down and you can uh, insert your state here. And you could choose which one, like say you're in Colorado, and it will tell you what cities have regulations and what those regulations are. So I'm going to link to that down below so you can figure out what it is. That's that's it, guys. The, the Not just California, but the rest of the U.S. is moving this way. People are tired of loud leaf blowers. They're tired of loud lawnmowers. And when it comes to pollution with cars on the road, we're trying to regulate pollution the the small the the small uh, small motor small engines they're one of the largest polluters out there and you know they're going to get targeted sooner or later now i know let me cut off some of the people because the people are going to be like well it, electric outdoor power equipment is not going to be real until i can buy a zero turn mower uh, electric zero turn motor this is whatever happens every time we have this conversation somebody says well there's no zero turn mowers there here are seven of the best electric z uh, zero turn mowers in 2021 and of course egos up there the top one that they chose here, of course, is C Cup Cadet. And we got Ego. And we got the Ryobi. And we got the Greenworks. You know, but then people are like, but, well, commercial doesn't use it, right? Well, we got commercial. We got Gravely. And we got Mean Green, the nemesis here. And they, in fact, the Mean Green's got two of them. They got the Mean Green Rival. This thing, this mower here will run for seven hours nonstop on one charge. Let, let that sink in. Seven hours of mowing on one charge. Okay, that's pretty much an entire day of mowing. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. You can argue, as I said, you can scream at the wind. You could say gas will never die. The businesses are saying it's going to. The politicians are saying it's going to. Your neighbors are saying we want it to. And you know what? I'll be honest, as somebody who converted to electric, fully electric for my home uh, and house needs about five or six years ago, I would never go back to gas for outdoor power equipment. I'm sorry. Electric is more convenient. I spend less time tinkering with my mower and mow more time, mow time, mow time, just getting the job done. And that's what we're all about here is just getting the job done and moving on to, to you know, play with other tools for the rest of the day, right? Anyway, don't don't hate on the bear. I'm just bringing you the the bear facts. <laughs> anyway, but you know what? I know you're gonna scream at the bear. Go down in the comments, type your little types out, get get your keyboard warrior on. You know, flame me all you want. But while you're down there, don't forget to chop the old like button, smash the subscribe, ring the bell, so you can make sure you don't miss any other videos that you can hate on me for bringing you the truth. That's all the bear has for you today. You all take care. God bless. And as always, gas is dead.